<laughs> this is, oh, that's a, that's a real purple heart. Yeah. Yes, it is. 24 karat gold to one of the last issues. Was that issued to someone? That was issued to uh, me. You? Sergeant John. We're doing some combat with him on West Point. So, Are you serious? I'm very serious. Oh, okay. Can you... Uh, Back in 1969. Did it all? Yeah. Okay. Now, And your name, sir, My is? My name is Timothy M. Scholl. Okay, and uh, both of you are from here in Olathe, is that correct? No. No? Okay, well tell me, where are you from? Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, Missouri. Very good. You've been in a lifetime residence there, or? No. No? Okay. Uh, do you care about talking about where you did most of your life? Our, our, our organization that we represent is a Kansas. In Kansas. Today. Right. Well, it's in every state. I see. And the, and disabled American veterans. Uh, it's in every state. Okay, disabled American veterans organization. Both of you are representing that organization. Okay. And we're here at the Golden Corral here on uh, November the 9th of 2006. And they're uh, actually sitting out here till Veterans Day, as I understand. Uh, well, we will get to go home soon. Oh. <laughs> Monday the 13th. Monday the 13th. Very good, sir. Okay, and uh, tell me a little bit about why you're uh, setting up a display and, and what you're doing here. Oh, let's see if we can do that. Yes, we can. It says uh, Transportation Network, all donations to the Transportation Program and Services Office Program. Very good, sir. Uh, all right. Yeah, we the uh, budget for the uh -huh. Department of Veterans Affairs for Transportation of Veterans is guess how much? I have no idea. It is zero. They haven't paid anything to veterans way before 1975. Transport and cost level veterans are responsible for their own transportation. Organizations such as the Disabled American Veterans and other service organizations solicit money and we donate vans to the government. They maintain them and fuel them. Uh, mm -hmm. Volunteers such as ourselves drive them and drive them and we take these individuals to the hospital. Or wherever they are. This is our transportation program. We all have so we have a service officers program that counsels and helps people fill out their claims that we're charged to. It's a very extensive one. Right here today we are here for uh, just veterans awareness to the public and to honor veterans along with the Golden Corral who is very generous in their uh, exactly. things that they do for veterans. Now the program is only on the 13th. They couldn't do it on Veterans Day just because of the question they but from uh, a certain time, I believe it's at least from 5 to 9 o'clock on Veterans Day, all veterans will receive a fee me. Their dependents and six significant others, however, cannot. They will have to. Well, of so course. if you bring the kids, you're not going to get here. You're not going to get a free meal. They have to make money somehow, don't they? Well, no. Uh, actually, the Golden General will actually lose money on that day, probably. But they will be... Uh, so just their way of saying thank you to the veterans. Every corral, golden corral in the United States will do this on November. 20th. Oh, is that right? Every golden corral in the yeah. United States? Yeah. Uh, I will I will see to it that uh, your statements will be out there and this everybody is, will see it before Monday. This, is How's a that? this comes down from national. Uh -huh. uh, started about six years ago. Very good. Very good. They do it every year now. Uh, let me let me skip back before we get too far off the subject because I keep looking at these medals and and uh, that's what veterans are all about. And disabled no. veterans or or wounded veterans or no, what veterans are about freedom. I know service. It's not so. about medals. None of us ever did it for oh, medals. That's right. Exactly. And I want to emphasize that. I stand correct. You're in a unit. It's commanded by somebody that is seeking medals. You should get out of it as quickly as you can. Very good, sir. Very good, sir. <laughs> let me uh, let me ask both of you. Uh, I think we touched upon where you actually did your service was in Vietnam. Is Vietnam. that correct? All right. I have a brother-in-law that's done three tours, so I you know I have to ask this. I have <laughs> no idea. Uh, and you were there from what year to what year? Do you recall? Uh, November 
of 69 to December 69. 69. One month. Oh, that's enough. That's short <laughs> timer. <laughs> one month too long. I, I've got another friend that was in the Navy, and he, he thought being in the Navy would keep him out of the harm's way. And he, no. He said, uh, he said they, they uh, started shelling offshore over there, and it was okay until they started shooting back. <laughs> And sir, what uh, can you tell me? What what area or? Uh... I am a retired Air Force officer. I was a regular officer in the United States Air Force. And uh, very my good. Southeast Asia service was with as an advice, transportation advisor to the Republic of Korea Air Force. Ah, uh, very good. And in that capacity, because of my security clearance and my. Uh, Diplomatic papers. I went TDY in Southeast Asia. Hot dog. I was stationed in Korea, but actually wound up in Laos and Cambodia and Vietnam. Don't ever let them tell you that we were not people in Cambodia because there were. There were. I do know that for a fact. You don't have to. And even to this very day, there are certain things that I cannot tell you. And we wouldn't want you to, especially on this program. Well, I wouldn't. <laughs> especially since it would not go well for me if I did. No, no. I wouldn't want you to do that, sir. But uh, basically, with the military assistance program, where we transferred uh, weapons and money and material to foreign governments to support our war effort, right. believe me, all the stuff was transferred was signed for it and accounted for. Right. And how well it was used. As a, uh, yeah. I'll give you a very good example. We got a gun camera photo in one day about an amphibious assault that was made by the communists in the tanks. And it was the Royal Cambodian Air Force when they were still on our side. <laughs> and we blew the cameras up and we looked at it and we realized that they had attacked a herd of elephants. <laughs> The people live there, they're supposed to know what they look like. Oh my gosh. Those weren't amphibious tanks. Those are elephants. The first plane just peeled off and they all followed in and just machined and pulled the hell out of the world. Oh my god. With allies like this, how could we help them then? <laughs> Are we shooting so, the friendlies? We're shooting the animals. Well, <laughs> it, it wasn't so funny at the time, but on recollection, uh, I understand. And this is exactly the kind of information I'm after. These stories so, that are so, so if humorous. Ever, if, you ever showed, if you ever showed a war movie, there'd be eight guys that are out playing cards. The movie would be four and a half hours long and be ten minutes of slaughter. I understand. I understand. But I thought you might enjoy the elements. Yeah, that's good. <laughs>